Hey guys, this is Locke. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to fight against a team like this, where it's centered around Ketoan, and uh, you're fighting this team in CM, and you have no idea how to beat it. So I'm going to give you ideas on beating this. I was actually hoping to kind of fight this team today, so I can show you a video of how to you know play against this team, but I didn't actually face this team. So instead, I'm doing a video where I'm just kind of talking about it. There is one match that I played against this team yesterday, and I already have the video out. It's in the day two class match uh, video. It's the first opponent that I fought. So if you want to, you know, see what I did, you can take a look there. But anyway, um, the main threat on this team is obviously Ketone, because Ketone, um, not only does she have a ridiculous limit burst, which will stop, um, and it's a very high chance to stop. So if she's able to stop one of your units for, with this skill, then that basically removes that unit for quite a few turns that it basically changes the match, right? So it's it's very powerful. But even without that, she has another skill that just is ridiculous to deal with, and that skill is Drain Force. So uh, Drain Force, it will bypass your defenses, it'll bypass your shields, it'll bypass your resistances, and it will do a percentage of damage. <clears throat> So this is a typeless attack, and this is an elementless attack. So that's why um, it doesn't matter what your resistance or defenses or spirit is, because it'll bypass all of them, because it's, it, it doesn't matter what those are. Uh, there are two things that affect the damage that it does. Um, the first thing is that it, Ketone's HP will affect it. So the higher her HP is, the more damage it'll do. The second thing is that it is actually affected by Maneater. So uh, typically, Ketone would have Odin on it, because Odin gives plus 25 Maneater, and so when she uses Maneater, um, she does increase damage. Uh, it, it basically increases the damage of the Drain Force skill by an additional 25 modifier, so that's why she will do even more damage with it. She can even hold the Odin VC as well to increase her Drain Force damage even more. And so I've actually seen this quite often, and it doesn't even have to be Odin VC. I've also seen a lot of people use this one as well because both of them give plus 10 man eater. So uh, anyway, that's Ketone. So how are we going to fight this? Um, well, one of the things is that because Drain Force is dependent on, um, you know, man eater, because, you know, a build like this, she's getting plus 35 man eater, right? That increases Drain Force damage. One way of fighting this is actually just to use a unit that is not affected by man eater. And that's basically 2B. So Drain Force is going to do much less damage to to be because first of all she has wind element so she has a high advantage over uh, ketone and secondly sh she's not affected by all these man eater boosts so uh, ketone will do significantly less damage to to be um 9s also isn't a human type either so man eater will not affect him but because he's lightning type he will take 25 percent more damage from earth anyway so he's not a good choice to fight against ketone um, so, I mean, 2B is just the straight up counter to her, uh, but you know, there are, there are other ways to fight against her as well. And I'm going to go through that, but, but this is obviously the most efficient way to fight because not only is she a better element, she's also not affected by man eater. So ketone will do like significantly reduced damage to 2B compared to other wind units. Um, but anyway, the first thing that's dangerous about ketone is her limit burst. So you kind of want to take care of that somehow you can use units, um, I mean, a wind example is Tifa. You can use units like Tifa that have innate stop resistance of you know 50% or more. Um, Ketone actually has a 67% chance to stop, so anything lower than that will still give you a small percent chance. But something like 50% chance, you will. Ha she basically has a very little chance of landing stop. So 50% resist is usually enough to deal with Ketone. Uh, well, to deal with Ketone's stop anyway. So you can use units like that. Uh, another example is Corwell. I'm giving you wind examples, but I will give you other examples as well. They both have stop resistance, uh, so Ketone will have a much lower chance of landing stop on units like these. Um, but I mean, I, I, every element has units that have stop resistances. Like a lot of the dark units, uh, Black Rose Helena has stop resistance, Duane has stop resistance, um, for the light units, Elena has a passive that can nullify stop, so you can use that if you want. Um, 
who else? Mont, King Mont has uh, innate stop resistance as well. So, you know, a lot of these units have, you know, very high stop resistances like the, the common units. So you have to, you know, kind of, when you are picking your team and you think you're always going to be fighting Ketone, which is a pretty fair assumption to make because I think I've been seeing her a lot this class match season. So if you think you're going to fight against her, maybe you can have at least one unit that you can put in front of the others that will have stop resistance that she will have to go past to attack the others. So you don't have to be afraid of this unit getting stopped. So you can use one of these units to, to deal with her, at least for that stop part of it. But something else you can do is actually uh, you can use items that give you stop resistance. So if you're using a unit like 2B, you can give her the ribbon, which will give 30% stop resistance. So it's not, you know, it doesn't nullify stop, but it gives you some protection, right? And if you're using 2B, uh, you don't want to give her a high faith. You want to give her, you know, 50 faith instead of 97 faith. So the lower the faith is, the less chance she has of being stopped. So with 50 faith and a 30% ribbon, you have a much lower chance of getting stopped compared to, you know, not using the ribbon. Um, something else you can do is give her one of two TMRs that gives you stop resistance. The first TMR is Federica's TMR. This has two casts and it gives you immobilize, disable, and stop resistance for yourself or an ally for three turns. You can use it twice. And the other one is Lowell's TMR, which gives you stop and blind resistance and also increases luck uh, for three turns in an AOE area one like that. So you can use one of these two as Ketone is approaching. Uh, you know, try to use it right before the turn that she gets to you. If you use it after you're already stopped, then it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. So you have to make sure that you apply this before you get stopped. Um, so that's the part. Like, you need to figure out some way of dealing with her stop because she will likely get to you. She has very high movement. She has move, uh, move four. I can't see it here, but she, yeah, oh, there it is. Move five. She has move five. And she might even be wearing something like this, uh, the Saiga Gonets, which can increase her movement even more to make it move six because, you know, fleet of foot. Um, so she has very high movement basically, right? So it, it, it's very likely that she can get into range to deal damage to you. So you should kind of have some way of uh, dealing with that. Maybe you, you can just play Rangers, right? Like maybe you just have Corwell, Federica, and somebody else like Fina or something. All three of them have very high range and your idea is to shoot down Ketone before she gets to you. That's one idea. It's, you know, you, you just have to deal with, you just have to find a way to deal with her range. Her stop range is three on her limit burst. So uh, if she has a movement of six, that's a range of nine. So you need to find a way to deal with nine range, which is pretty difficult to deal with. But, um, you know, so it, it's, in my opinion, it's better to have something that gives you stop resistance uh, or use units that innately have stop resistance to deal with it, right? Um, but anyway, that's that's the first part of Ketone. The first part is her limit burst. The second part is her drain force. So you need to be able to um, burst her down, right? Because if you leave her with like 10 HP and then it's her turn to go again, she will use drain force and drain force will absorb your HP and give it to her. And it has quite a few casts as well. Um, as you can see here, oops, not this one. Drain Force has five casts, so she can keep using it over and over. And um, she will get back all the HP that she deals damage to you. So um, you need to burst her down. And sometimes she comes with like Halloween Dryer's TMR or something, so she has an additional life and it's really hard to kill her. But you basically need to somehow put all your energy, like, you know, this is a team that you're fighting, uh, Zazan, Mont, and Ketone, you need to put all your energy into killing Ketone. Because if you leave her alive and her Drain Force kicks in, you, like, you're gonna have a hard time. So obviously, again, Wind is something that you can use to deal with her because it'll do increased damage. But there are other ways you can deal with her too. For example, you can use King Mont, but with very high accuracy, you need to gear him appropriately that he has high accuracy to, you know, be able to land a hit on Ketone. You can use King Mont and you can use this skill, AP Drain, to remove her AP. If she doesn't have AP, if she has zero AP, she will not be able to use Drain Force. She will not be able to use her um, uh, Limit Burst. And 
you know, if she can't use her skills, she's kind of useless for that until she gains some AP, and until she picks up a crystal or something. But you can keep doing something like AP drain, and there are quite a few units that have this um, AP drain skill. You know, you, you can use Corel uh, with the same, like, you know, Nightblade sub job to do the same thing. You can use 9S, but 9S is, again, lightning type, so he will drain, uh, you know, less AP than than somebody like King Mont. Uh, so you can use these units. You can only use Venera because Venera has a Seize AP skill to do a similar thing. So that that's another way of uh, fighting her. If you don't think that you can build a team that can um, deal outright damage to her uh, and kill her in one turn, then you can steal her AP or you can uh, do some kind of status effect. Like you can use a unit like uh, Jiza or you know like the regular Zazan to charm or something like that or uh seymour again another charmer you can use something like that you can you can charm her because she does not have innate charm resistance um she doesn't even have innate stop resistance so you can use obviously a ketone to fight against the ketone she might have ribbon or something though to give her stop resist um she also doesn't have disabled resist or berserker resist so you can use units like uh you know king mont or other units like that that can uh, inflict status effects on her if you can't bring her down on one turn you want to confuse her or stop her or berserk her or something like that um, and you know ignore her while she's under that status effect and clear out the rest of the team and then um, put all the units together to kill her uh, before she wakes up out of her whatever status she has you know um, so that's that's another way of dealing with her like the first thing the most preferred way, obviously, is just outright kill her. Because if you outright kill her, then she's done. You don't have to worry about her anymore. But you need to do it within one turn. You don't want her to um, get to you and use Drain Force because usually Drain Force does a lot of damage. Uh, it, it does like between 3 and 4k, maybe 5, 6 sometimes if uh, if everything is right. Like if she has a man eater bro from Zazan and um, she's fighting against a lightning unit and so she gets an additional modifier because that's lightning. So basically, she only has like what, 5.6k HP, 5.4 in this build. So she basically can heal herself to full almost, right? So you really want to one-shot her. Um, at the very least, you you don't want her to get into range of you to uh, reinforce you. So you kind of have to keep your units apart. Um, thankfully, Drainforce does have some limitations with, his, with its um, range like it's only a height range zero so if you are able to stand on a height that's like plus two or plus one from where ketone can reach then uh you you can avoid drain force and it's also only in a straight line as well so you can stand kind of diagonal uh, while you're hitting her and uh you know if she can't reach you and you're on a diagonal that's also one way to avoid getting hit by drain force so that's something else you can do so uh, again as i mentioned outright killing her is the first thing you want to do but if you can't do that um, you can like inflict status effects or drain her AP. Um, draining AP is only it has like only a limited uh, amount, like a limited effectiveness because on this map there are so many crystals. So if you drain her AP, she can just go and grab a crystal. But like for example, say you have uh, Kingmont and uh, Corwell, something like that, right? And you're fighting this team, and uh, Corwell cannot one turn kill uh, Ketone. And King Mont, when together, they cannot one turn kill ke kill Ketone. So what they do is uh, Corval attacks Ketone. Maybe he gets her down to like half HP. And then King Mont uh, does AP drain. So she doesn't have any AP left. So now she goes and gets her uh, AP back from her a crystal. Corval attacks her again. Now she's down to like 25 HP. King Mont goes and AP drains her a second time. And now she has to go ahead and grab a third crystal to even have the option of using Drain Force. And when she does that, now Corval basically kills her. So it, it does, you know, you, it, 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 it is, uh, you have to play a few turns to actually get the desired outcome. But by, by doing this, you are not, you don't have to deal with Drain Force. At least you're not losing damage. You're not losing HP while you're taking her down. Uh, you st do still have to figure out what to do with the other two. Like Zazan and Mont will not just stand around while you're doing this. You have to figure out what to do with them. Maybe you can berserk them or something, you know. But um, 
that that is the idea like you want to ap drain her and while she's going to get her crystal she will at least not be able to um drain force you while she's doing that so you buy yourself one turn right so uh and the heal from the crystal is significantly less than what the heal from a drain force would be so that's uh, another method of of dealing with her basically so the three methods that i mentioned one is outright kill her two is ap drain her three is uh, cause some kind of status effect that uh, basically ruins her plans like if you stop her that would be like the perfect um a perfect counter to her because she often stops you so uh anyway i hope this kind of gives you some ideas um i i think it would be much better if i can just show you examples of of myself fighting teams like this but i i didn't fight anyone maybe if i fight somebody tomorrow i can try to make a video and show that um but this is you know in theory this is how i would deal with it um what am i playing i'm playing this team right now and how do i deal with Gitone? so um if you know basically i i try to just kill her from range <laughs> before she reaches me right because even with a nine range um usually she can only get to movement six if she has her own tmr uh and if she does that i would use uh corwell to use his dispel spread because by dispel spread not only will uh, sorry dispel barrage not only will he remove the uh movement from ketone but he will also remove the utisimi buff that she often has which increases her missile and magic resistance as well so um I, I I use that and then with Mont I use Stone Throw because it's a guaranteed hit so I don't have to worry about his accuracy. So he, he uses Stone Throw, uh Corval usually uses Dispel Barrage. And with those two and Jaden doing any anything, like even even his uh unerring shot which is a guaranteed hit, usually that kills her because that's a three chain already. Um and I also have Mont here with Keen Blade as well. So if I use that properly, I might be able to get a, another turn after that. And with four heads, she's usually dead. So I, that's what I do. I, I basically try to focus on her, like no matter who else she's with, um, I try to focus on her because I don't have um, a, any TMRs that gives me stop immunity. So she's a huge threat. I do have charm immunity. So if she's with the Victoria or something, like I, I'm, I don't fear Victoria as much because of the charm immunity that I'm able to give myself, but I don't have stop immunity. So I, I, I like I will do everything I can to make sure I kill Ketone, even if I lose like one or two of my units. Because if Ketone gets into range to start her drain force, then I most likely lose. So I have to make sure I, you know, get rid of her before she does that. So anyway, that's this is how I'm playing it. Um, and I hope I give you guys some ideas on how to deal with her. I, I see that, you know, she is very, very common to CM, which is kind of surprising in a way, because usually people are like, how do I deal with range? How do I deal with Federica? So it's kind of refreshing in a way to hear people asking to deal with somebody else instead of Federica for, for change. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope it gives you some ideas on how to, uh, how to deal with her. Anyway, if you have other questions or comments regarding this, let me know and I'll do my best to try to help you. That's it for now. Take care, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video.